matters contributes to Grotto. Um, Grotto is a web-based game uh, built with Django that my friend Wiley is putting together. I think it's as a, possibly a school project, um, but hopefully it's a fun enough game that we can keep it going for a little while. So last time we worked a little bit on the DevOps side of things and uh, we got almost everything sorted out. There's a few little kerfuffles that uh, would best be um, trouble shot. So one of the things that I noticed is happening is if we set the instance to um, prod and debug is false, then something weird happens. So I'm going to recreate that with my uh, dev instance here. Uh, give me one second to <coughs> free up the port that the app wants to use. And I'll do make, actually, let me, um, let's look at Docker Compose first. Oh, wrong, wrong thing. Uh, Grotto, there we go. Um, yeah, I was going to look at Docker Compose. That's over here in the second tag. And so right now I have it set to dev. Let's set it to prod real quick. And then I want to also set debug to false. And then let's hit make run. We'll see this thing start up. And we're going to get some weird. We're going to get a 500 error if everything is still working. Yeah. So it's kind of a catch 22. That error doesn't happen whenever debug is true. Um, yeah, if I make run again, if debug is true and I start this thing, then everything works fine. Let me wait for it to recreate before I refresh five times. Give it a second, it'll go. Yeah, everything works fine. However, if I, um, as you saw earlier, if I put debug is false, then um, restart it. and we'll get that 500 error again. So it's kind of a hard problem to troubleshoot uh, because the um, because the when you're running debug is false, you don't get the nice uh, debug output whenever you run into a server error. Likewise, because it's um, because it's running debug true, it doesn't print that stuff to log. So it's a little bit of an intractable problem until you realize that Django uh, built some special stuff exactly for that. Um, if you set up uh, email backend and you set the environment or the uh, the setting admins uh, somewhere, um, if we set up some admins in there. And here I've just done a, a console backend. Then we get a nice a log output that'll tell us exactly what's going on. So I, I kind of did my homework on this yesterday, and uh, we're getting missing static files manifest entry for main.scss. So it's not finding the thing that it's looking for. So why is that? I haven't really investigated that too much. Base.html. Over here, I think that might actually be the problem. That slash. Shouldn't want that slash. So let's see if that fixes the problem. It won't because I'm. I need to reload the instance. So let's make 
stop and make run. And maybe that'll fix it. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, my guess is that compress also changes behavior whenever debug is true. So uh, there's a, a bit of a um, a bit of a hard to troubleshoot thing happening there. Let's go back to our screen here and let's hit refresh one more time. Oh, still server error. Why is that? Hit refresh one more time, just make sure. Okay, let's see the logs, see what we got in there again. Ba -ba -ba. So, same deal? That's weird. Just changed, yeah. I saved it. Make build and see if that fixes the problem. And then let's run it again. Still getting that server error. Let's give it another try here. Hmm. Okay, so that may not have fixed our problem. I want to check the output one more time though. Let's check that output one more time. I want to see if there's still a slash, because there really shouldn't be a slash anymore, because I removed that slash. Still a slash. So let's look for that and see where else it appears. OK. It appears in a few other places, uh, a lot of other places. Okay, what's what's all this? What is this in? This is in okay, that's in the cache CSS thing. Uh, no big deal. We don't care about that so much. What we do care about is up here. Template static pages index. Okay. I'm going to refactor this index to use base.html um, just so that we don't have this, this multiple usages here breaking our stuff up. Um, there's only a few things on this page that are uh, that are sort of real. That need to be in the in here, right? There's a lot of sort of stuff that's boilerplate. So let's deal with the page title. Okay, he copied. I get it. I get what happened here. So don't need that. Page title is just going to be grotto. Um, 
body. So we'll just make a, a tag for body class. Oh god, that's not what I wanted. Body class here is index. Header, header, nothing there. Um, so he wants no header, which is a deviation from what this has, right? This includes header. So what we can do is make a block for that. So if I just copy this, fix the indentation a little bit, and call this block header, then in the other file, we can do block in block and no header. Well, we kind of want explicitly no header. Ah, come on. Okay. Uh, main. No sidebar. Um, section. Okay, so we want a different. Uh, we want a different thing here. So let's do block main. gives us some thing that we can do here. Uh, we also could have done like sec main section uh, uh, class, just like we have up here for um, body class. Um, that would work. I, th I like the block a little bit better though. All of this stuff, it's in block main, and that's that. This div can go away, footer is nothing. Shouldn't be any actions. Uh, okay, so he explicitly wants no footer. What's footer.html say? Footer oh, it's empty. Okay, that makes it easy. So we just do nothing. Get rid of this, and it's, it's clean. It's not quite perfectly clean yet. Let's fix it up a little bit. Um, we want to use the static files processor. So we'll just say static bard. And that should draw that. We also want to grab the URL processor so that if the URL changes for whatever reason in the future, it doesn't uh, break our site. So URL, I think this is just uh, guild. Hall. Just guild, rather. Let's check that though. I've got too many tabs open, so let's go on a little adventure closing up some tabs. You are a guild, exactly. Guild. Uh, oh no, hang on. We need to go to the other URLs. Don't need you. Oh wow, I don't even have visibility on that one. This is the one I want to see. So character builder index is what this thing is called. And then we don't have these things yet, but we could. They're pretty close to existing. Um, 
think he has the template for them at least. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's put them in. Let's get rid of the rest of these files we don't need, and let's open up another URLs, the main one. So we have these. We also want to do agreement. I want to believe that those already exist in in place. So, okay, I think just fixing this issue that we're having. Let's make stop and make run. I think we're also going to need to refactor, or we'll be well served refactoring agreement. Oh, you know what? I uh, messed up. This should extend something, huh? This should be uh, extends base. <clears throat> I don't. I do need static. Don't need compressed though. Try. Hey, what's up, Android RK? How you doing? You've come to the most exciting corner of the internet right now. I'm watching this white screen refresh, I'm trying to figure out why it's uh, giving me these fits that it's giving me. It's slow going, but you know. That's how it, that, you know, that, that's, how, that's just how it goes, you know? Okay, so it's still missing a manifest entry for main.scss. The, I think the reason that that's happening is that, um, is that white noise isn't capturing those CSS, SCSS files, um, it's not expecting to. It's not expecting to do anything with it. So um, we got to do a little bit better on on that. Again, this thing works fine if I put it into debug. If I say debug equals true, no problems at all. So Docker compose. I'll just do that right now. Say debug equals true. We will make run to recreate this thing and and we'll watch it start up the way we hope it should in a minute once it finishes recreating There we go. So it starts up. It doesn't quite start up perfectly because I changed the changed this. It may need to actually be images barred. Yeah, it does. It needs to be the path to it. So fixing that. Cool. Yeah. And then I think, whoop, never mind. As you were, agreement. 
Oh, it's looking at agreement.html, so I need to fix that as well. No sweat. No sweat. Um, so there's still something afoot about our SCSS handling. I have a solution to that, but it's going to require a little bit of rework of the SCSS um, uh, management. But uh, we'll get through it. All right, so first let's fix up. First, let's fix up this stuff. Yeah, that takes us to the right spot now. Let's see if this page loads or if it's going to complain about it. I don't like this bar. I don't think this bar was here before. If we look at the prod instance, no, it's a much smaller little thing down here. So we should figure out what that's about, why that's showing up now when it wasn't before. Um, Oh, it's the actions panel. So we'll fix that by moving this if a little bit further out. If there's no actions, then there won't be an actions panel. Otherwise, there will be. Oh, hey. The agreement needs you to be logged in. That's weird to me. Why is that? Oh, it's because <laughs> I got the wrong thing there. Yeah, that should be a template view. Huzzah. Template view as view template name equals agreement.html. Let's see what we got here, and now let's try this one more time. Nope. Did I not save? No, I saved. Do I need to reload? Maybe I need to reload. Still okay. Yeah, let's let's reload this. So Android RK, if I'm doing anything that you want to know more about, feel free and uh, pop a question there in the chat and we can dive a little deeper on it. Right now I'm just doing some sort of DevOps stuff surrounding this, uh, this game called Grotto. I'm trying to make it uh, a little bit more hardened for a production deployment. And we will see if this worked. Okay, it worked better. Not to say it worked exactly. Agreement. Where do you, okay, you live in static pages. All right, I wanna just, uh, well, maybe it'll work if we just do that. Let's, let's see. Is reporting in the same place? Yeah, so we'll just pop a little, um, where did those actually end up? Templates, uh, I don't see a static pages. Oh, it's in here, templates, static pages, agreement index index how does that what in the heck is this about okay so it's finding it th there wait is it finding it there
to spell something? Agreement.html. No, that's right. Oh, I see. It's because those these items are under Grotto. Uh, well, no, this is the URLs for Grotto. Huh. What is, is this? That is that one. Uh huh. Hmm. Well, this is fun. I just did a make start and make run. It's searching. It's not searching everywhere that we sh It is, it's searching. Okay, it's not searching in uh, the subfolder. So let's try it. So pr let's put privacy there as well. Where's privacy right now? Privacy got put down here. Man, that's a terrible looking bit of HTML. Uh, let's move you up to Grotto templates. Static pages. this a little bit later but since we've relocated those files let's put all of those like that and there we go okay that is a kind of a mess You. That'll get rid of all the white space, and then I can do this. change this pattern a little bit here um, before we go any further I'm gonna don't save let's fix up this let's get rid of those and um, instead of having this block main that I did I'm gonna just sort of revert that instead of doing block main where are you block main this isn't even the right there we go. Block main. Instead of doing this, I'm going to do block uh, main section. always going to be one of those the only thing that changes is what we call it and then over here in index I should be able to change up this to content and then get rid of these section tags and then Cool. Then 
with that in mind, a lot of this stuff can go away. as well. Uh, there's no header. And then all of this stuff down here is just the content. Oh, Mr. B. trucks going on here. How you doing, little boy? He playing. And then down here we do an end block. And we've gotten rid of a lot of the boilerplate. Uh, the formatting is still a little bunk. standardize the formatting a little bit. I'm going to sort of capture headings here. And then uh, we'll do an ordered list for these. Maybe. double-lined things. I'm just going to make an H2. And any of these single-lined things. Oh god. Let's get rid of the double lines before the H2. Multiple cursors can be a, a blessing and a curse. Oh god, something happened. So now we can do our, oh god, I forgot to do the fix for that too.
What? Ah, yeah, I need to uh, move the cursor, move the cursor, and then All right, that should work. Almost completely work, that is. Okay, and then there's one more P to fix at the bottom, and then we're just about ready. a lot better it's not perfect because I forgot to do the extends base thing once I do that it should have some styling that makes it look right okay that looks fine to me I think that looks good actually so let's continue on doing that thing um, <laughs> put an OL at the bottom our trigger li and delete the number there can go to the end of the line plus one put a p tag go to the end of the line close a p tag p tag end of the line p tag should look a lot better now should fit the style cool looks great and then let's do the same treatment for reporting open up reporting over here in the third screen do the same treatment extend space these things End block. Pow. 
Okay, so that should fix up recording as well. Good. And that's an external link to a different page. Cool, so those are all cleaned up a little bit. Um, I noticed, I know that that's strayed a little from DevOps, but it's still uh, just good housekeeping, I think. Um, right, so the actual fix to our DevOps problem is that um, is that Django compressor and white noise are not playing well together with the um, with whatever it is here, with, yeah, with uh, with the Django Lib Sass, I think is the requirement we have there. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure. I guess we can go Django Lib Sass, check out their documentation, and see what they have to say about um, about deploying with white noise. If they say anything at all about it. Um, uh, let's see, let's just see for a second here, where does static, okay, it's just right there. Hmm. And the last log message that we saw, which should not have changed, was complaining that it couldn't find the manifest entry for that thing. I wanted to say that we had just done a fresh build. Uh, no, perhaps not. So I'm wondering if collect static ignores that uh, because collect static would have put okay I'm thinking that white noise doesn't play very well with um, with this live sass thing but I know an alternative that does play nicely and we will switch over to that uh, one second, I'm checking up on my messages from somewheres. Okay. Um, so the alternative that we're going to use is Django SAS preprocessor. Django SAS pre or Django SAS processor, sorry, not Django SAS preprocessor. Um, I've used this package before. It's quite nice. It's um, no more troublesome to set up than any other. Um, it it has given me fits in the past, in um, in having slight variation between uh, um, dev and prod. But I think that's because I was not using white noise in dev, and I was using white noise in prod. I think it'll play fine if you're using white noise in both places. So let's find out about that. Um, <laughs> so we already have Django compressor as a as a dependency. We're going to be adding this one. Let's put it in, and let's see what the most recent version is. Maybe there we go. Okay, it's about the same maturity as the other. So the main thing that um, that I'm wanting is this. Is this compile scss command? I shouldn't, or the uh, the the package doesn't need to produce a a, a dot css file whenever it's being used in dev, um, and whenever you're using it in prod, you're going to compile all the css before you uh, before you uh, are using it. Right, you can compile it uh, during your your 
container build or image your, yeah your container build um, <laughs> All right, so to configure, first we sort of need to deconfigure Django Live SAS. So let's uh, let's get our code side by side here. I'm gonna get rid of some windows. Get rid of you, and then we'll put this side by side, and we can do. Um, do some uh, deconfiguring here. So first off, requirements, we'll be able to get rid of you. And then in um, settings, looks like there is a compress precompilers. Actually, hang on. Before I go through all this, I want to see if there's some Django Live SAS and white noise. See if anybody else has tread on this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Maybe we'll check that out. Let's see. Okay, so this person is using white noise. Salt using Justin Dancer below. Oh, okay. Just need to do another step in there. So I do not need to change anything about the package that we're using. Let's try this out first and see if that does what we want it to do. Um, I'm going to put that into our uh, Docker file. Collect static compress. I'm wondering if I should. I'm wondering what advantage there is to collect static first. I'm wondering what the advantage is. So I'm going to try it without it, as if I haven't learned enough for myself. You should just follow the damn directions. Uh, compress. No input. All right, let's make build. See how this does. Great. really great oh uh, is it the no input part okay yeah yeah it's the no input part because it's supposed to be force force yeah force la force okay mm. let's change it up to say Debug is false. I shouldn't have built that again. It didn't need to. And then let's run it. And with luck, we will be in business. Server error. Us. See what the logs have to say. Same business. That's great. That's just really. That's, I just love it so much. Okay, let's fix that again. Let's try it with both. Four, 
40 plus processed. Oh, I need to run. Sorry. It's not going to make a difference. to see it happen okay so that didn't seem to work right let's check back in here and see so perhaps compress okay maybe I need to need to look more into Django compressor it's possible let's uh -huh, uh -huh. Screenshot of your browser, of your editor, rather. That's cool. <laughs> uh -huh. Normal stuff, normal stuff, normal stuff. Compressor. Wait, do I have compressor in my installed apps? Probably. Yeah, I do. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Live SAS, static files. stuff normal stuff okay a few tricks when it comes to porn production offline compression okay okay compressed down a little bit let's find where they are static root static files static files ders static files finders storage <laughs> okay Adding another thing to static files finders. Okay, he already did that. That's fine. Um, got it. Compress cacheable precompilers. Compress enable. Okay, so here's where.
that's where we're getting into some stuff that's not. Some more settings in there. I think this is the the same guide that Wiley was using to set up his uh, to set this up initially. So maybe this rounds it out a little bit, and we can we can see something going. Still didn't see any more. Like it, it's the same number of files that are getting. Uh, oh, hmm, mm, mm, Let's find out. Still not a okay. Let's check the error. Check the logs here. Still didn't like it. Go back to this guide and see it one more time. See if anything got overlooked or missed. So the thing I'm noticing here is that they that I did notice here before. Is that they were using static files instead of static? That shouldn't be a problem. That's just a reversal of what we have. Load compress. Why isn't it compressing the way we want it to, though? Okay, well I don't I don't love it. I don't think it's working right. So um, Yeah, I don't think it's working right. And that's a problem. So we're going to go back to what I was saying before. Switch it out to Django SAS processor and see if that does the job a little bit better. Before we do any of that, I want to make sure that the repo is in good order. Uh, I didn't push a change that I made yesterday. I was doing some sort of real-time changes before Wiley did a little demo of this, um, and I didn't stream those changes. My apologies, they were brief. Um, so let's see where we're at. Main still does not have more DevOps concerns. Um, merged that's fine I'm going to uh, check out me oh I need to sp 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 yeah let's commit all my stuff first well I don't want to commit this stuff Because that stuff, well, actually, yeah, that stuff is fine. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, not gonna commit that because I definitely don't want that to happen. So I'll discard that. Um, let's stage you, stage you, stage, 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 URLs. Stage it. Privacy. This is a horrid, horrid bit of HTML, auto-generated by something, and uh, I'm not messing with it. 
Um, this is a new, yeah, wait, what? Oh, whoa, 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 why is it in here twice? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, uh, sass not quite working right. Let's commit you. And we're in good shape now. Uh, clean working tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and gut this thing out and we can uh, get rid of all this stuff from here. And we can do the installation for um, Django SAS processor. So I wanna say we need these. <laughs> yeah, we need the static file there. I don't think we need static file finder. You're white noise, you're good. This is all Django Live Sass config drop. Uh, So my thinking here is that when we're building, debug is true, which means compress offline is false, and therefore it's not compressing for offline. So inv, inv, um, debug. Syntax Docker file in Oh, come on, Scoop. Okay, equal sign. Okay, so we haven't gone too far down the rabbit hole of adjusting anything yet. Again, my preference is to leave the dependency that's there. I don't wanna mess with the dependencies if I don't have to. So Wiley chose this one dependency. I'm gonna stick with it if it works. I'll, I'll do whatever I can within reason to see that it works. Uh, but if I know that there's an alternative out there, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just switch to the alternative before I, uh, you know, spend a whole day trying to make that thing work right. Okay, so I set it to not be in debug mode. It still looks the same, though. 440 post-processed, 144 unmodified, 311 post-processed. So I didn't see any change in that. But let's, um, oh, I did make a change in Docker Compose, so let's not, uh, let's not lose that. Let's do another make run just to get that configured the way it ought to be. And then we can check it out again.
doesn't look promising. Same same deal as before. I'm guessing if we check the logs, we'll see the same missing static files manifest entry for main. That did not seem to do the thing. Let's get rid of that. All right, unfortunately, we're gonna have to drop live sass. So all of this This is live SAS stuff, seemingly, in addition to um, compressor. I wanted to say, actually, I should look at the official docs instead of some other place. Okay, so let's lose. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, with Django compressor set up, let's. Where are the docs at, homie? Okay, so we just need compressor here to be gone. Static files finders has already been bonked. Okay, um, <clears throat> now let's go through the install for uh, Django SAS processor. So requirements, I'm gonna put SAS processor back in there. I'm going to get rid of you. And then up here at the top, we can do SAS processor. What are they? File system finder, act directories finder. Okay, so those there are. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. drop this in there as well. These are static folders if any of them are okay, that's fine. That's fine. We need to change the change the base template. 
no more of this. Let's summon this. Okay. Don't need any Ginger to support. Load SAS tags, need that. I don't think we need compress anymore. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bean footage. Media client, no, don't care about that. Offline compilation. So loot. Oh, okay. No, don't care about that. That may be something fun to do. Okay, it's all fine. All right, let's give it a try. Um, I need to change the Docker file to instead of this, it needs to be compile a CSS. Don't need that one. Compile SCSS. All right, let's build a new container. I should still have it running in debug false. So this is going to be like a live production test. We'll see f straight out of the gate if this functions. And if it functions, then from there, we can check if it functions in dev the way we hope it will. What I want to avoid and what I think what I think libs the, the the original solution permits is to to not have to do a reload or anything like that for a new change to your SCSS to be propagated into your into your actual template uh, or into the, the browser. Um, if you have to refresh, then that's going to be annoying for Wiley, who does the most of his work in the SAS and SCS, uh, in, in the, the, the styling side of things. And um, and so, yeah, I, I'd like to keep it as easy as possible for his sake. One second while I answer this text. Um, hmm. Okay, so we built it. It should be running. Let's see what we get. Actually, I should look at the output. So it did that, and it did that. 445 now instead of 440. So there's a little bit more happening which bodes well let's see if it works it's still giving me a 500 error put my phone on silent here so it's not quite so loud for the streamers <clears throat> All right, so why can we take a look? It's in a book. Wow, okay. So 
So it's the same issue. Totally different package, same issue. That's, I don't, I don't love that. Um, oh, I know why that's happening now. Um, at least I have a credible understanding of it. I'm going to fix something in the Docker Compose here. I don't want any volumes for a minute. The volumes are overriding what collect static collected. So let me build and run again. And if this works, then I need to go back and check. Um, need to go back and check on a on the old config, which may have worked under the same circumstances. So let's have a look at this. Let's see if we're getting any functionality here. Still a 500 error. Oh my. OK. Well, let's see what's telling us again. Oh, OK. It's a different error this time. Look at the main. I don't understand that error at all. I don't like that error. Okay, let's try uh, let's try reverting some stuff here. I wanted to say I had to do more than that. So I'm doing all these builds because we're we're testing the production deployment, and um, once we've gotten that hammered out, once it's all working okay, then we'll check the dev deployment and see if that works fine too. Uh, so when we're doing the dev, we should not have to build this much to see changes come through the SAS or for SAS to even work for that matter. Come on. Come on. Let's have it. Give it to me straight. Uh, let's check the logs again and see what we should do about that. Enable locate file main.scss while rendering tag. Okay, so it's it's doing a thing here. It's still looking for this. It's, it's not. It's looking for main.scss and it's not getting it because it doesn't it doesn't exist. I'm guessing. Uh, let's look in and let's see. Uh, make a shell. CD static files ls. So we have main.scss. It's right there. What in the world are you possibly on about that you can't find it? Is 
it's literally right there. <laughs> um, let's try one more setting. See if it makes a difference here. Static URL. Okay, build it one more time. So same problem, different approach. All right, so it's unable to look at the menu this file. Let's check the docs one more time. There was a thing um, about, where was it? Check my base template again. Got that. Where did that line of config go? I swear I saw it a minute ago. Ah, here we go. Uh, if inside you also want to import using, okay. I don't think he does that. Which do not start with an underscore. Okay, so we we're not we're not messing with that. CSS. following the directions why isn't it working <clears throat> excuse me
guess I get the same thing. I didn't actually change anything. That's how computers work. Um, unable to locate file. Okay, let's. This is driving me crazy now. <laughs> okay, well, this doesn't seem to be working the way I hope it was going to. So let's bump out these. Let's bump this back into place, the LibSAS version. Let's try it. With the old style. without bonking the <clears throat> without bonking out the directories in the container itself. Did I mean compress? I didn't mean compress. Sorry. Sorry, homie. enabled but key hmm okay it's a different error I like that new style sheet static main that's promising Getting closer. Oh man, I think we almost got it. I think we almost got it, guys. Before this, let's set that environment variable. If debug was true or false. So that uh, compress acts the same way that it will in prod. No, that's not what I want. I wanted to make build and make run. Interesting. Doesn't like it, but if we try the little thing that the guy in the Stack Overflow thread suggested, 
and maybe we get there. 440 post processed, we compress, we force, we collect static, we get the same number out. That's not a good sign. Well, I mean, it's a fine sign actually because it passed. It didn't it didn't give me red text. So this might act oh, Hey, oh my goodness. Thank thank the maker. Okay. Um I'm extremely happy to see that come up. I was getting a little depressed about it. So actually, it looks like for my money this Django Live SAS works a little bit better than Django SAS processor. Um, I'm not going to drop it because it works. I'm not going to delete this yet, though, because I want to check what it, how it behaves in our staging environment here. Or in our prod and uh, the hell. Um, how it works in our dev environment. So let's change this to dev. Change it to true. Let's build and make run, and let's see if this thing still works like we hope it will. If it does, then I uh, I'm I'm going to consider changing this depend changing my other SAS projects to use Django Live SAS because uh, using SAS preprocessor um, does require some finagling to make it seamless to make it really work right so it's it, it isn't really seamless I guess is what I'm trying to say um, so if this gives us a more seamless uh, environment then I'm all for it okay okay we got it we got it folks I'm gonna clean up some cruft here and then we're gonna commit this so we don't lose it bye don't need this anymore I'm gonna leave it though I'm gonna leave it just because having those uh, output on the command line is or on the, the console is pretty nice it's not gonna cause any issue for us either so um, this I kind of feel like merits some documentation setting debug triggers certain certain build behavior um, we want to reference the nice fellow here that we know where that stuff came from. Let's get rid of the nonsense that we had from here. Let's clean it up in here as well. And one last place, I think, right here. Oh, right here. Right here. You go away and you stay. This has been a this has been a, a struggle. Uh, it's been a struggle, but it's uh, it's coming it's coming out okay. So hopefully soon we'll be able to put uh, debug to uh, false on prod, and then I can put a secret key in place and do all the other security stuff. I'm gonna do that off of uh, off of the stream so that uh, you know the secret key stays secret and all that. 
Um, mm -hmm -hmm. let's docker build and let's push a new version up. Uh, well, let's hold off on that. I want to go ahead and commit. I want to deal with some other stuff too. Um, settings, some small changes to settings. And that's all. Um, <laughs> let's look at to do troubleshoot 500 error on prod. Actually, let's make sure that this is working right. I uh, don't want to um, call it fixed and have it not fixed. Mm -hmm. That's always annoying. Here I've been doing this bit of yoga. I pull using Docker because Docker Compose has been crashing on me, and then Docker Compose up seems to work right. I haven't had a failure on up yet, on down or on build or on any other damn thing. On pull, it's all bets are off. It fails like more than half the time. Uh, but that's not actually what I wanted to do. I needed to then Docker Compose here and change debug to false. And then let's up it again. And we should see it coming up in a minute. Oh, wow. I was just bragging on you, Docker Compose literally one minute ago bragging on you about how you didn't crash and how you were so stable and so nice and then what do you do what do you freaking do but you crash on me ah Ugh, man. So, up D. Are you going to do it again? You're going to freaking do it again. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. Just, just bragging. That's what I get. That's what I get for bragging on something stupid. It's not even the right directory. Ugh. Prado CD prod on screen. No screen. Uh, Docker compose of D. Okay, work this time. Because it knew it knew it was gonna get a, a severe beating if it didn't. A severe, just extremely severe beating. Okay, Grotto, Wiley Wiggins, com. Woo! Okay, that's with. That's with uh, debug turned off. We'll check that. Cool. Gives us a 404 like we expect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, everything ought to work fine there. We ought to be able to see the code of conduct. It looks great. We ought to be able to see the conduct reporting. It's not present, but it looks fine. Uh, and that is, that's what we're looking for. Cool. Now, 
the next step on my list, and this, I'll be honest, this uh, uh, troubleshooting took uh, long, way longer than I expected it was going to take. So kind of annoying, but totally necessary. So no big deal. Uh, the next thing I want to work on is a uh, something to make Wiley's life easier um, so that he can work on this project without any training wheels or without me having a, to you know to, to do all the the devopsy stuff uh, I want to be I want the I want the I want the CI pipeline to do the full shebang Right, I want it to build a new container and I want it to push it to prod and I want the new container to come up on prod and I want uh, I want it to be all happening just because a push to, to, to main happened. Right, so we have a little bit of a uh, loop to close here. We've already got the container building. The container building on prod on push to main uh, should happen uh, as soon as the current branch is pushed is merged and pushed to main uh, that that was set up by this github workflows thing um, the next thing that has to happen is uh, that the after the container is built and pushed up to docker hub the CI pipeline needs to reach out to the production instance and tell it to uh, refresh, to tell it to pull the new container and, and set it running. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways to to do that. You can like have a small REST API living on the the target on the, uh, the the prod machine and have that listen for a, a web hook from the CI pipeline and then have that trigger off a job. I want to keep it a little bit simpler. I want the SSH. I want the uh, CI pipeline to SSH to the target machine, and just fire off the command or two that are going to cause this to update. Um, I do not want. I repeat, do not want the CI pipeline to log in as root on this. Uh, it's bad enough that I'm doing it. I would prefer to not be. I'm only doing it out of laziness. Wiley sent me the SSH key for root, and you know, I trust myself to not abuse that. So here I am, uh, not following best practices, logging in as root, doing stuff. I am not going to let the CI pipeline do the same thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a user for the game to run uh, as. Let's see if. Wiley already did. Doesn't look like he did. So I'm gonna do a uh, add user grotto. I'm gonna get some help on this first, and then let's see what user mod. Okay, he's just giving himself a group. So add user GID one. Actually, I'm guessing that there's a group called Wiley. Um, yeah, Wiley has user ID 1000, which is what I'm using in my Docker file. We'll deal with this. No problem. We'll deal with this. Um, 
So add user. GID one thousand disabled path. Oh, uh. I'll let it I'll let it ask me for a password. Uh, right, I need to give it a name. Brado. Cool. So all this stuff. Oh, new password. Um I'm not gonna be using the password. I'm gonna make an SSH key instead and let that be um and let that be the way we log in. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna make a password for this. Personal bravado game. Cool. Full name, Grotto, room number, enter, work phone, enter, home phone, other. Yes. Cool, SU Grotto. I love it. Um, now, all the stuff here that I have in prod can move down there to Grotto. Um, <laughs> user mod ag docker. Wait, hang on. User mod help. Yeah, ag um, docker. Auto. Prod to home grotto. Okay, and then SU. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Shown. Cursive. I want to give, um, I want to give the group write permission on that database. That doesn't need write permission from anybody. Uh, okay, so then, um, I'm gonna Docker compose. CD Docker compose down. Hey, it actually worked. I love it. it. Should be Grotto that's doing the running from now on. 
Um, the I have the use, I have the password for that. I need to make a um, SSH key. Uh, let's su to Corrado. Prod. I should be able to run Docker compose. D and have this thing run. Seems to work fine. It should also still work here. Good. That's excellent. Um, so it's already running a lot safer now. I'm gonna go back up to root and I'm going to uh, LSRM. And then SU to Quadro again. And then SSH Keygen. Six rather. Um, take away the help. It's fine. Fine, it's fine. Cool. Okay, the the can I do next so I need to use this private key no, that's not true what am I saying I've forgotten entirely how SSH works right now. Um, How does SSH work right now? How come I forget this? SSH uh, private and public key. Somebody will explain it to me. I know this. I've known it. I haven't thought about it in a long time, but. So I'll be using the uh, private key. I'll be putting that onto GitHub, uh, GitLab. I'm sorry, GitHub as a secret. Let me tell Wiley to do that now. Can you create a new repo secret?
SSH key. And I'm gonna move, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull up another terminal over here on another screen to get that public key. I'm just going to take this screen over to another window so I don't have to log in in a different place. So now, uh, 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 uh. Okay, sorry about that dead air. I'm gonna go ahead and clear off my screen there so that we lose that. Oh, hi. What is even happening? Well, I don't love that. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna close that window. There we go. That's better. Um, SSH Grotto Prod. Glorious. SU Grotto. Okay. Um, so from there, now that we have. Uh, yeah, actually, we're not done. We're not done yet. Um. I think I need to do an allowed keys thing. Uh, let's see if that's authorized keys file. Here we go. Do, 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 authorized keys. I think I just, it's just a file called authorized keys. It's in the .ssh and I put the public key in there. Man, it's amazing how if you don't think about this stuff for just a little while, it uh, can escape your brain. Uh, and I don't want to reference my own SSH keys folder on, you know, the stream here, because uh, security and all that, at least security theater. So them authorize. Actually, you know what? Cat. Uh, ID dot pub, the public one, into. Cool. And now if I use that public key, I should be able to log in as Grotto <coughs> on this machine. We will test that more robustly a little bit later. Um, let's see what command might be useful and let's see about putting that in our workflow so i want to understand I'm gonna close that first you don't need to be open either okay um right github Order of workflow execution. Magnificent. Okay. That seems confusing. Run workflow A depends on B. Create a repository disk event in the last step of workflow B. <laughs> Using action repository dispatch, you set workflow A to be triggered on repository dispatch. Okay, 
Let's have a look see. That seems confusing to me um, and requires you to use another action so I don't love it I think we can do better Okay, so I could put it in the same job. That's maybe the easier, that's almost certainly the easier way. Give me a minute to read this. steps in a single job execute sequentially uh huh multiple jobs in single workflows and wanted to put up die if we're all 10 jobs no problem why do I need to control ba -ba. four easy steps yeah seems like a pain in the ass to me I'm going to just put it in the same job because it mentions steps in a single job execute sequentially. So steps, check out, docker build, and then we will name uh, deploy to prod. Deploy the password uses uh, okay let's figure out how to do an SSH from a github action SSH beautiful deploy code over our uh, with our sync over SSH using oh using node on one node Not exactly what I want to do. Yeah, I'm not copying the folder over. I need to just run a command. SSH command. SSH action. Here we go. This might be it. Seems like there's a lot of these. Perfect. This does exactly what we want. Again, I'm not quite sure how to use uh, GitHub Actions Marketplace correctly, uh, so I'm just going to not do that. I'm just going to copy pasta because it lets me do it. I don't even know if that that might be how it's supposed to work. Who knows? So host. Yeah, sure. Let's do host as well.
All right. So we'll keep up with that. I'm going to change this to Grotto. Get rid of that and change this to the name I gave to Wiley. Prod SSH key. The command, let's make up our command here. Um, the command here that we're going to work, it needs to do two things. It needs to do the pull. I think I've still got that in my history here. I don't. Oh, it's because I'm not the right person. It's probably in my history here. Docker pull. Bingo. Uh, I wonder if I can get away with doing the ands like that. Uh, and then what's the other command I want? Docker close up D. Could work. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but I like where it's at, so I'm going to give it a try here. Auto deploy. catch up Let's catch up to main here so that we don't lose any stuff um, merge main you seem good now uh, I like this license Sweet. Yeah, this is a pretty good this is a pretty good license. I likes it. Um and then I'll push that up. And I think I think that's gonna get the job done for deploy on push. And then we'll save that splitting up settings for various environments till later. There's actually There's actually not that much in here that needs to be separated. It's just this, really. And since we don't run with, uh, since we don't run with uh, debug false in in dev, we probably don't even need to have that this little part. Um, so yeah, actually, for the time being, I'm gonna leave it. I'm, I'm not gonna say that this even needs to be done. Things will have to get a little bit more complicated before we get there. Um, and is like if we started taking in files and had to deal with the file storage backends and things like that. Um, if we started having a different login technique, for instance, if you're using some sort of a OAuth from a, an OAuth provider out in the wild, then um, um, then that you know that complicates things a little bit. So for now, I'm going to call that good. And I'm actually thinking that my 
you know, w what I can contribute to this project formally is, uh, you know, it's it's decreasing every day. There's uh, most of this I think Wiley could could take over um, from here on out, um, barring you know some big feature stuff, maybe some more game engine stuff. Um, but once I I feel like once I'm able to pass it over to him and he's able to get changes pushed to prod straight away, then it, it'll be pretty minor feature ads that I'll be needing to give uh, in the future. So uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, uh, thank you for chatting, Android. I know it was only the one thing, but uh, um, either way, thank you for participating. And um, be sure and smash that follow button. And uh, yeah, see you next time. I need to organize what I say at the beginning and end of, of streams. Maybe I'll work on that someday. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourself and have a good day.